All right, the final installment of Postseason Awards, who you got? Great casual conversations with all my guests, so I appreciate all of them for stopping through. But let's wrap this thing up with our last two guests and Postseason Awards, who you got? Part three with Coach Evans and friends. All right, the next person I have up is Living Big with Big Rage. Most of you people that are in my chat box or in follow me on um, YouTube, you see Ridge in the chat box on the regular. Ridge also has his own channel where he talks about Baltimore Ravens on top of some other things. So I brought Big Ridge in to talk about uh, the postseason awards and get his takes on the postseason awards. Welcome to the channel, Ridge. Thank you, sir. It's an honor you having me here. Always, always. Uh, we Reg actually was one of the people that came to the meet and greet. We got to meet in person, you know, got to hang out afterwards, too. And uh, it was a great time had by all. And it's probably a time I won't forget because that was something special to have guys from different walks of life just to come to one place and meet. And, you know, uh, because we are fans of the Ravens. So that, that was a cool experience. And I appreciate you for coming and, and the missus for coming, too. So um, let's get into the postseason awards. Uh, we started with the comeback player of the year. And that's Joe Flacco, DeMar Hamlin, Baker Mayfield, Matthew Stafford, and Tua Tunga Baloa. Who you got and why are you picking them? I got DeMar Hamlin just simply because to come back from a life-threatening experience and be able to get on the field and show that heart and love, you got no choice but to take them. I mean, everybody else, I understand what Joe did, but DeMar Hamlin, hands down for me. <laughs> yeah, that's – that's um. It's scary. Scary what happened, but I understand. I understand the pick definitely, and I, and I think that's the guy that's probably going to win it. But I, I definitely rock with that pick also. Going to the second one, offensive coach of the year. I'm sorry, assistant coach of the year. My bad, assistant coach of the year. Who you got? Ben Johnson, Mike Todd, Jim Schwartz, and Bobby Slowick. I'm gonna go Mike McDonald. Right, number mm-hmm. one defense. I mean, he did. He had the trifecta. Number one in sacks, mm-hmm. points allowed, and freaking um uh yards, right? Um, so what was it turn was it takeaways? Was it, well, it was takeaways, takeaways, take-away. interceptions, take-away, takeaways, yep. takeaways. So there you go. I mean, how can you pass that up? I love what Ty did with the offense, then Johnson over there in Detroit, but Mike McDonald's got it. I mean, that's statistic you can't pass up. Gotcha. And led, even though Cleveland was technically number one, like from the yards perspective. But to, to pull off that trifecta, that's something hadn't been done in a long time, if ever. And he was the leader of that defense. So I, I rock with you on that pick, definitely. Next up, coach of the year. Campbell, Harbaugh, mm. Ryan, Shanahan, Stefanski. D'Amico Ryans. Okay. Why would you pick D'Amico? D'Amico Ryans. Uh, he took a rookie quarterback mm-hmm. and a team that was just in the slumps last year. Bottom of the barrel last year. And said, you know what? We're going to turn it around in a year. Right. First time coach, first time QB. I mean, you can't – there's no way, no matter what John did, Dan, he's been with them for about two years now. Mm-hmm. Stefanski, he's been down there for a while. Kyle Shanahan, we know what he is. Right. So for D'Amico to come and put his name in the hat with head coaches, uh, a guy that was a linebacker in the league, and right. do what he did, not only with that defense, but with the offense as well. Right. He was Shanahan's assistant last year. Yeah. Absolutely phenomenal, and I'm, okay. I'm absolutely proud of him too. They made a bunch of great decisions with their organization, so I ain't mad at that. Like picking D'Amico, then doing what they needed to do to get that that third pick. Uh, so, which brings up to the defensive player, uh, defensive rookie. Of the year, I'm sorry, uh, Will Anderson, who is aforementioned, uh, Jalen Carter, Joy Porter Jr. from the Hated Steelers, Kobe Turner, and Devin Witherspoon or Devon Witherspoon, however you say it. Oh, that's a tough one for me. <laughs> That's a, this is a real tough one. Uh, I'm right now between Devin Witherspoon and Will mm-hmm. Anderson, mm-hmm. and I, I'm, I'm leaning towards Will Anderson because he helped lead lead that defense in Houston that turned out to be very, very good, and they made the playoffs. Yeah, I'm going to go Will Anderson. Go I'm, I'm happy to go Will Anderson. I, I think he made the biggest impact. Okay. Um, Devin Witherspoon, you could just throw the other way. Same thing with Joey Porter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Will Anderson made the biggest impact. And Jalen, he was on the failing Eagles defense that just flopped over towards the end of the season. So, Right. I, 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 the only thing about Jalen is I think he probably was the most consistent one on that defense, even though they was getting cooked on the yes. regular. Yes. Uh, offensive rookie of the year, Jameer Gibbs, Jamar Gibbs, Sam Laporta, Puka Nakua, Bijan Robinson, C.J. Stroud. 
Uh, this one's going to be in, uh, a pick that a lot of people don't like that I made this pick. Okay. But I picked Puka Nakua. Okay. Um, For me, I know a lot of people want C.J. Stroud, but mm-hmm. I picked Puka because he broke rookie records in mm-hmm. receptions and yards. When you come in as a rookie on a team that had other weapons right. on top of that, he single-handedly turned the Rams into a playoff team. Yeah, he was he was definitely part so, of it. He he made he made them not be cool with making Cooper Cup a decoy. Exactly. Which is nuts. So his his impact to me is more than just numbers, but that's a good pick. I I, I respect it, respect it uh, totally. But I think the the America's pick might be CJ Stroud, but that's that's a good pick and a good logic behind it. Defensive player of the year. You got Deron Bland, Mr. Pick Six. Max Crosby, uh, Miles Garrett, who's everything, Michael Parsons, and then T.J. Watt, who led the league in sacks. Five good defensive players. Who you got? Oh, I hate saying this, um, but I'm going to go Deron Bland. Okay. The man's not only getting turnovers, but he's taking them to the house. Mm-hmm. Whenever you get a defender that's going to score points for you, it was like Ed Reed for the Ravens back in the day. Yep. When he touched the ball, it was fear of him scoring points, and that's the deal with Deron Blaine. You put it his way, he might take it the other way. And when you strike that type of fear in an offensive coordinator and a and a quarterback, it makes a big difference when they changing up that game plan. And also, when I'm you score to defensive touchdowns, your chances of winning go through the roof. And he mm-hmm. produced he produced six, I think, five or six, just straight six six sixes. Yep. All right. Deron Bland got that. So the offensive player of the year, Tyreek Hill, Cheetah, LJ8, uh, CD Lamb, CMC, and Dak Prescott. So I got Lamar with an MVP. Okay. So for offensive player of the year, I'm I'm gonna say Christian McCaffrey. All right. I'm gonna say Christian McCaffrey. Dude had a dominant season. Single hair, and I know this the playoffs aren't supposed to count in this. But he just drugged the 49ers to a win over the Packers. Sure did. Like, like <laughs> without him in that game, they are done for. Yep. And he's showing up every week, whether it's as a running back, wide receiver, Whatever. no matter what it is, he's there every week. And he's yep. balling out of control. And, and definitely putting up numbers. And had had a streak at one point of 18 straight touchdowns, scoring a game that was breaking, was broken. Versus Jacksonville, and they did everything they power to get him one too. That that, that last little bit of that game. And then, lastly, you already said Lamar's your MVP. Um, Action Jackson, what 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 stood out to what stood out from Lamar for you this year? First and foremost, his pocket presence. Mm. His pocket presence is amazing this year. We've seen in years past. I know they constantly tried to say he was a running quarterback. This man stood in the pocket, and he knew when the pressure was coming. In years past, you would see him kind of get caught up where guys are slapping his arm down. Maybe he lose the ball because of that. But he knows when the pressure is coming, where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. He knows how to step out the way, slide through the pocket. His maneuverability in the pocket has just been through the roof. Pinpoint accuracy. And guess what? His deep ball is connecting now. Right. And that's <laughs> that. Just he just became an all-around threat for every single part of the offense. And he's the only guy where I look at this list and say his team couldn't do a thing without him. True. To me, that equals MVP. Gotcha. I 100% agree. Uh, so for the people that don't follow you, Reg, uh, let, let them know where they can find your work at. Uh, Living Big with Big Reg here on YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok. Okay. I appreciate you, Big Reg, for joining us, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace and love. Yes, sir. Welcoming back to a uh, welcoming back to the show, another member of the Ravens content world, uh, In Raven. How you doing today, my man? I'm good. I'm good. I appreciate you having me on, being a part of this coach. No problem. No problem. Always good to, when we get together and collab, whether it be my, sure. on my side or on your side. I enjoy having mm-hmm. a great conversation with you. Every but, time. Uh, let, let's kind of dive right into it and just mm-hmm. give me your opinion. For obviously, NFL honors is um, that Thursday before the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So just gonna go through the slides and you kind of give me your picks for the different awards and let me know why. You know what? For for this one, um, <clears throat> I would give it. I, I think the person who honestly should win this award is not even on the list. Uh, and reason I say that is because this person they missed the end of last year due to injury. So usually when it comes to comeback player of the year awards, 
it goes to somebody who missed uh, either the whole season or a chunk of last season, the previous season, due to injury, or they weren't playing at all. Uh, and that would honestly be Lamar Jackson. Like, think about that. Lamar Jackson missed the end of the year last mm -hmm. year with the injury. And then he not only came back this year, but finished the entire regular season this year. And it's looking like he's going to be the MVP. So I feel like they, they missed a, uh, a finalist in this one, but it's okay. But from having to choose from this list right here, mm, it, it is a really, really tough one. Um, I would go with... <sighs> I'm gonna go with Flack. Uh, I, I, I mean, Tua to, to, to did his thing this year too. Overall, even though against the good teams, it wasn't so pretty. Mm -hmm. But reason I would go with Flack because was he even on a team last year? I, I, Jets. Oh, he oh he was with the Jets last year. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I guess he literally came back off the couch this year then. <laughs> um, but but he came in and like. Why he, he he was throwing that ball? He was, he was slinging that ball everywhere, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I probably shouldn't have said it. But anyway, uh, Flacco he he was doing his thing this year, and he brought the Browns in position to where they actually had an opportunity to get the number one seed at one point. They would have needed a lot of teams to fall apart, like the Ravens and the Chiefs and all this other stuff. But they were close, um, and he brought them to the playoffs. Um, so I will go with Joe Flacco. I think the NFL would obviously with everything that happened last year with Demar Hamlin, I think it's going to be handed to him. But I, I probably would go with Joe Flacco. Right. That, and that's that's a great story, Hamlin. But I, I agree with you. Um, um, Joe Flacco is a lot better story than than Demar Hamlin. But let's slide on over to the next one. Okay. <laughs> next one is uh, assistant coach of the year. <laughs> 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 Ooh. Man, hey, like, look, I, I know it's going to sound a little biased. Uh, Mike McDonald, he came to the Baltimore Ravens last year and absolutely did his thing. This year was a complete turnaround, uh, not a turnaround, but just, and I can't even say consistent. He only got better. Mm -hmm. He got a lot better. Um, Todd Munkin, brand new offense, just got to the team, had a lot of missing pieces throughout the year. I would give him the slight edge over Mike McDonald, reason being because Mike McDonald had already been here. So there was a lot of familiarity with the team, with the coaching staff, with the personnel and everything. With Todd Munkin, this is all brand new. Mm -hmm. Everything was brand new for him, uh, for the players. Everything was new. And for him to take an offense with Lamar Jackson, like a lot of people might think like, oh, an offense with Lamar Jackson, it can't get no better than it already is. Greg Roman probably maxed them out. They done reached the highest the heights that they're going to go. But Munkin said, no, 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 no. Watch this. And he made Lamar Jackson and this offense even better. He allowed Lamar Jackson, in my opinion, to really take a big leap forward as a quarterback in his career because I felt like with Greg Roman under that offense, I felt like Lamar Jackson sort of hit the wall. With the, right. Well, it was more so the offense hit the wall. Lamar Jackson ain't hit it, but the offense hit the wall. But with Todd Munkin, they broke through that wall, and they, they, they it's like they built building a whole new house. Right. And the <laughs> thing about that, too, is that this is only the first year. Mm -hmm. So if, if he ends up staying next year, then they'll only be that much more comfortable. So I can see the offense getting even better. So I will go with Munkin in this one. Gotcha. Gotcha. Next up, coach of the year. Mm, coach of the year. This one, I'm I'm just giving this one to uh, Kevin Stefanski uh, because of what the situation was. Uh, all the other coaches obviously had plenty of success, but I'm giving this one to Kevin Stefanski. Reason being because in what world do you go through four quarterbacks and hmm. you still make the playoffs? Like, that's unheard of. Most teams wouldn't get to the playoffs if they missing that starting quarterback, which is understandable because that's your starter for a reason. But this right. dude literally had four quarterbacks and a lot of other injuries too, but had four quarterbacks and still made the playoffs. I say Kevin Stefanski hands down. Great pick. Great pick. Not to mention Nick Chubb in week two or three. Yeah, yeah. They missed a lot of guys with injury too. I forgot all about Nick Chubb. So, yeah, you're right. Defensive rookie of the year. Mm. This, wow. this is a stacked list right here. <laughs> this is tough, man. <laughs> oh, this is like an any mini mighty mo, man. Um, mm. oh my goodness. Uh Joey Porter. I mean, we get to watch him two times a year mm -hmm. to see how good he was. I mean, Will Anderson, we got to watch him two times a year, too. Um, mm. I I'm gonna just go with Joey Porter. I, I got okay. like I feel like I'm just Picking a random uh, name out of a hat because it's a it's a toss up for me. Yeah, all, all these guys had great years and they yeah. all great. And that, the fact that they play different positions and you only got two, two you got two cornerbacks and two DTs. It's it's 
this is that's tough. they did their thing, man. All five of them, all <laughs> five of them. They just did it in different ways. And and the, and the one that's that I may pick is probably the most underrated one. I said may pick, and that's Witherspoon. Ooh, okay, may okay. pick. But I like y'all it. hear my pick at the end. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, offensive rookie of the year. This one, like. Obviously, it, it's most likely going to go to C.J. Stroud. And I, I feel like C.J. Stroud is amazing, man. I, I remember watching him in week one, uh, just watching how he looked. He was very comfortable. He um he did not make the big rookie mistakes. I remember going into week one thinking, oh, we're going against a, a rookie quarterback and a rookie head coach. Oh, yeah, we're getting at least two, maybe three interceptions, but at least two of them, not one. Right. Not, not, a, not a single one. And even watching him in, the, in his playoff game, he just really takes care of the ball. And, and I love how C.J. Stroud plays. But Puka, uh, Puka, he was a baller, too, yes. breaking records and whatnot. And, and shout out to Matt Stafford. Because Matt Stafford, that's one quarterback. Well, he's he going to get the opportunity to break some records, man. Mm -hmm. Whatever receiver it is. Yeah, he sure will, man. Um, I, uh, and I mean – Gibbs, Gibbs been balling too as yeah. a running back. Oh yeah, oh they got both Laporta. I didn't know they had mm -hmm. Gibbs and Laporta on on the. Okay, I ain't know they were both finalists. I ain't know that. Okay, uh, and then for John, uh, v. John Robinson, I, I, I he's a baller, but um I, I feel like with they the ain't Falcons, using right. Exactly, I'm about to say that they ain't giving enough opportunities, man. But um man, uh, not that I wish it could go to two people, but because I don't like that. I don't like like them sharing an award. Yeah, me either. I go with uh C J Stroud, but. I, Puka like right there for me too, man. Mm -hmm. Them, them. Well, I'm gonna go. It's between those two for me. Mm -hmm. It's between those two for me. Next up, defensive player of the year. Mm. Jeez, uh, Deron Bland. That was uh the pick six king for right. a minute. He was hot. <laughs> I think he got five or six. Yeah, come playoff time, but that does, it fell apart quick, man. Um, <laughs> and then everybody else like T.J. Watt. Miles Gibb, my all these defensive ends and pass rushes. Um, I would go with TJ Watt. Uh, mm -hmm. TJ Watt is an absolute game wrecker. Um, he is an amazing player. He's a frustrating player, especially being a Ravens fan. We see him all the time, and he's always just annoying because he always making something happen. Um, so I, I would go with TJ Watt. And who didn't he lead the league in sex this year? Yes, he did. Yeah, so yes, I, I'm gonna did. go with TJ Watt. Led the league and was off some um all pro teams, which is nuts. Yeah, that's crazy. Ooh. Offensive player of the year. Ooh. <laughs> Man, I, I really thought Tyreek was gonna get that 2K. It was looking like it. Um Me too. Mm. oh, there go our boy Lamar, uh mm -hmm. CD Lamb, Christian McCaffrey. I, I would give this I give this to Dak Prescott. Okay. I feel like Dak Prescott, he, he had a um a, a really, really good year stat-wise. Um, didn't turn the ball over like crazy did with the interceptions, threw a bunch of touchdowns, a bunch of yards. I know with Dak Prescott, uh, the, the famous Shannon Sharp saying the empty calories. Uh, and ever since he said that, that, that always stuck with me. But um, I, I would give it to Dak Prescott because he, he he put them the pretty numbers up, and that's what mm -hmm. the offensive player of the year, I think, is about. It's about the numbers. So I, I will give it to Dak Prescott. Gotcha. And last but not least, MVP. Oh man, nice. Uh, write your, write your, your, write your Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> nice like, options to choose from, but yeah, uh, this this year uh, with Lamar Jackson, um, I really appreciate the fact that it's looking like most likely he's gonna get his second MVP, even if it's not unanimous. All right, cool, but he he's probably gonna get a second MVP. But what I really appreciate about it this year, and I feel like it's something that you especially could appreciate too, is that I feel like the people who are voting for the MVP, they're not just looking at stats. They're actually right. looking at film. They're watching the games. They're seeing like, man, Lamar Jackson is really, he has a high impact and the value that he brings to this Baltimore Ravens is crazy. It is yeah. crazy. And um, my guy, uh, Gowie, the kid Gowie made a really good point on Twitter today. And he talked about how with the 49ers, how can they have two MVP finalists? How can you have mm -hmm. two MVP finalists on one team? Like one of them has to be a lot more valuable than the other. Uh, but that, that was an interesting point. But with Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen had an amazing season too. But yeah. you factor in the turnovers, the interceptions, that's big. That, that That's big. And he, I mean, 
it's crazy because he played like perfect in the playoffs pretty much and they, that still wasn't enough but anyway with, with, with Lamar Jackson just his impact on the game what he does for these Baltimore Ravens and the fact that when he went against other potential MVPs like a Christian McCaffrey and Brock Purdy like a Tua Tagovailoa and a Tyreek Hill at, at one point they obviously not on the list anymore but when he was in those big games those primetime games those games against the really really good to great teams he showed out sure and he, he stepped up and he showed out. So I, I will definitely go with Lamar Jackson for this one. And so there are in Ravens MVP of I'm not MVP <laughs> postseason awards. So, um, <laughs> and what I'm doing is I got uh, some guys that were before you and you kind of wrapping it up before me. And so I just wanted to say thank you for coming on and sharing these oh, awards sure. with me for and I sure. uh, appreciate taking the time out today, man. Let the people know where they can find you if they already don't have you. Cause I know most of them do, but I'm sure it's, some people out there that haven't seen you yet, let them know where they can find your stuff at. Nah, it's all good. Team, keep it clean. What's up, baby? But, Coach, I appreciate you again for having me on. Thank you. Uh, anybody that's interested in our channel, we talk Ravens all day, every day, literally every single day of the year. Um, it's Engraven Vids uh, on Twitter, Instagram. Everything is Engraven Vids, so you're more than welcome to come through. I appreciate you again, man. And I appreciate you, man. Have a good one. You too. And that concludes our postseason awards Who You Got episode with Coach Evans and Friends. Shout out to Engraven Vids, Cole Jackson with Road Graders, Big Reg from Living Big with Big Reg, Vice Lombardi, Jose from Lunch Break Hot Take, and Michael Crawford from the Deep Cover Podcast for taking time out of our day or their day to spend a little time with me and share their opinions on who should win these awards.